Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. We've had the AutoCrafter on our server for a few weeks now, using the data pack that brings the experimental 121 features to 120.4. And while playing with snapshots is all good and fine, once you actually have to build these things in survival, you learn new things. Some challenges come from integrating the crafter into setups that weren't designed with the AutoCrafter in mind, like the one behind me. Of course, if you design a farm with the AutoCrafter in mind, you come to different designs. For example, this slime farm here allows the collection of slime balls at 24 times hopper speed, and each of the four AutoCrafters receives the items at 6 times hopper speed. In this video, I'll show you several different ways to integrate the AutoCrafter. Today's video covers only crafting recipes where we have one type of item input, like for example, compacting bamboo or bone meal, but these make up most of the actual use cases. Of course, special cases may require special solutions. For example, I made separate videos for my ice farm and my wither skelly farm that have non-standard autocrafter setups. Feel free to check out these videos. Let's get the basics out of the way. The crafter cannot be powered by quasi-connectivity, which has advantages and disadvantages. Essentially, you'll have to know that an autocrafter does work in a different way than droppers or dispensers. The other thing is you can't put a hopper under an autocrafter unless it's a filter for the output item. So in most cases, I'll just have the crafter output the items directly with the assumption that there is a water stream below or into a dropper. All of the setups I'll show you may be useful in certain circumstances. There are space constraints, naturally, then there are time constraints, the autocrafter setup has to be fast enough. And the two big ones, do we have to be one white tileable? And how many recipes do we have? We'll get to the latter in a moment. And I apologize that I can't tell who invented which setup. Shortly after the autocrafter came out, there was a flurry of designs on Reddit from very different people. I did create many of the designs here myself, but have no doubt that other users did similar things before me. All right, first there are many cases where we don't need to be one white tileable. And this allows this extremely simple setup that I use whenever I can. We read the crafter, gate the signal strength from the site using signal strength 9. And once we have 9 items in, counting locked slots for recipes like dripstone, the signal goes through. This basic setup here powers the block over the crafter. And this alternative setup powers the block in front of the crafter. The comparator will still read the crafter, unless that piece of redstone dust here has signal strength 15, which can never happen because the highest level we might ever get is signal strength 9. And of course, there are different ways to get the signal in. So one big advantage of the setup is that it's extremely fast. The redstone signal reaches the crafter after just two game ticks or one redstone tick. So no matter how fast we bring in the items, this setup can handle it. We use no observers, so we'll get exactly one pulse and we'll never have a second signal with less than nine items in there. And this means we can use the setup for items that have different recipes, because we'll only ever get a signal if we have nine items in here. Another advantage is that it's stateless, so there's no flip-flop involved, as in other crafter setups I'll show you in a moment. So basically you don't need to worry about unloading or having the crafter setup trapped in the wrong state for some reason. Look at this gold farm here. This is the mess that it was before the crafter, where we got over 100 shulkers of nuggets per hour and a ton of shulker box loaders, all loading shulker boxes with nuggets that we have to, had to craft into ingots or blocks. And now it's down to these few components and one shulker box loader that produces gold blocks. Now, if I had to build it again, I would use double speed filters and a setup that I'll show in a moment. But when I designed this, I used single speed filters and simple three times speed chucker loaders because they are very robust against unloading and I didn't want to rebuild the filters. So I just ripped out the shulker box loaders and replaced them with autocrafters. In the world download, you'll find a copy where I bring in the gold nuggets via command blocks. Of course, powering the block over or next to the crafter, so the crafters in here, might have unintended consequences. For example, in this gold farm, this redstone signal locks the hopper next to the ice for a moment, as long as the signal persists. Of course, here with about 20 filters for gold nuggets, that's not an issue at all, because we'll always have an empty filter further down the row, and the signal is very, very short. But the second setup here can avoid this issue if you are concerned about that. Now, in this case, this hopper would still be locked, but if the items come in from this side, you don't have a problem. Now we know that redstone dust is laggy, 
But here we are talking about a farm that spawns 35 zombified piglins per second and holds over 500 of the buggers in the overworld elevator. So the redstone lag from these couple of lines is really not a big issue. Now summing it up, this is really my preferred setup because I don't have to think about other recipes. It's very fast, it's stateless and it's very easy to build. But of course in many cases we have to be one white tileable. For example if we do something like this, what could be a pre-processing for a storage where we craft bamboo to blocks, gold ingots to nuggets, melon slices to melons and so on. Or you may not be able to get a signal in from the site due to space constraints. Fortunately there are a ton of other setups if we can't use that one here. Now the most fundamental question is do we have more than one recipe? And there are many cases where we can't craft anything else. For example crafting bones to bone meal, flowers to dye or gold ingots to gold nuggets. And if that happens just use a clock. For example this could be a setup for a gold farm or a slime farm. We have a clock that activates if items come in over this ice and then we just power these droppers and also the crafter. The setup is extremely fast, the items come in at six times hopper speed and you don't need any complicated controls for the crafter. This of course assumes that we only get one item of a type and in this case I have double speed filters for the gold also using the hybrid design that allows me to pick up almost a stack of items, which is a bit more complicated to build than the normal impulse SV sorters. But it's not always the case that you have such an obvious trigger for a clock. So here are some more setups that define kind of local clocks. Don't get confused, I usually use iron ingots as renamed filter items because they are always easy to get and plentiful. But this for example is a gold ingot crafter with a local clock the clock is enabled whenever there's anything in the crafter. The problem of course is that the clock will keep running if you have only some items in the crafter or any locked slot. So what you can do instead is a setup like this where you enable a clock if the items come in through this hopper. So we put in a few items, we get a reading from this comparator. This enables the piston pushing down the observer and then the crafter is powered as long as we have fresh items coming in. This setup here works at topper speed. It can for example craft flowers to dice or bones to bone meal. The observer clock pulses at double hopper speed. You can bring this down using a copper bulb which halves the pulse. So now the crafter is powered also at hopper speed. Both of them are one white tileable, not too expensive. But the drawback is of course that it's noisy and also takes a bit of space. So here's another setup that you will find a lot on Discord or on Reddit. And this one is silent. But the drawback is this setup doesn't work at hopper speed. So for example, we couldn't use it to craft flowers to dice, but it will work perfectly, for example, to craft nuggets to ingots, or bamboo to bamboo blocks, or pointed dripstone to dripstone. And it's one white tileable as well. The principle is that we read the crafter using this comparator and power the redstone dust here. Then we have a comparator on the other side that gives a signal strength of 8. And the easiest is a crafter with 8 locked slots, but you could use a composter at level 8 or a container with the correct amount of items. Until 8 items nothing happens because we still have level 8. But if we add the last item, this redstone dust will change to 9. This is read by this observer. This updates this observer. This gives a pulse to this dropper, strongly powers this dropper and also weakly powers this crafter. So. The crafter runs and then the signal strength goes back to 8 because the crafter is now empty or perhaps has one or two items in there depending on how fast they come in and then we get a second pulse. So this is completely fine for crafting nuggets to ingots but it wouldn't work for iron because the second pulse that we get will craft other things like pressure plates or nuggets. And there are two ways you can build this. Once by powering the block below the crafter, for example a dropper here or the craft could go to a different site of course. And once by powering the block above the crafter, in this case the signal is relayed to the top. The principle is exactly the same. But what happens if we have something like iron ingots where we have other recipes? In this case we need a setup that sends only one signal and not two as in this one. And this is the point where we use a flip-flop. My initial idea was to use observers like this and this setup works perfectly. So what happens is instead of directly powering this block we move this observer and for two movements we only get one pulse. 
and this way we only get the iron blocks. But there's a much more elegant way using the new copper bulbs, which is completely silent and more compact. And I don't know who had the idea first, it seemed to pop up in several reddit posts I saw. But the basic idea is that the copper bulb can be red, so if it's on it gives a signal and if it's off it doesn't. But it doesn't need a constant power source, if we just power it once it will stay on. So this is a very compact flip-flop, or if you want a pulse divider. The effect is the same, for two signals from the observer we get one signal at the crafter. The signal goes to 9, we get a first signal, this turns on the copper bulb, this strongly powers this block here, in this case a dropper, could also be a barrel or something else, this weakly powers this crafter, crafter crafts, signal goes back to 8, and this turns off the copper bulb. Let's give it a try. And this also can be wired in different ways, according to your space requirements. Here's another setup that relays the signal on the top, while the standard setup relays the signal on the bottom. Now the flip-flops may be in the wrong state. This is one white tileable, but if you build this, for example, if you add a redstone here, then this observer will read a change and the copper bulb might be on. So in this case, just place a button here. The setup should be that there's space in the crafter, at least two slots because the setup is rather slow and the copper bulb must be off. And now if new items come in, the setup will start working. There are speed considerations. The setup needs 10 ticks to react. So it's slower than hopper speed. This is very rarely a problem. If you craft ingots to blocks, for example, you'll need a bit of time to get 9 ingots in. But it could be a problem if you have recipes with 4 items like dripstone and bring in the items at 4 times hopper speed. Here's a practical example and you see that you can use very different wirings for different systems and in many cases you can even use them next to each other. So there are crafters behind here. The highest signal strength we could get in here was 9 if this crafter would be ready to craft. But if this crafter here is ready to craft, this would also be signal strength 9. We are set to compare, not to subtract, so everything works. We still get signal strength 9 here. And this redstone dust does not power this crafter here, so all is good. And you can even use the upper and the lower variants next to each other. And this would be an example of a little storage where you have different items coming in via a water stream. And you will just sort the items here, again using this hybrid design that allow me to pick up almost a full stack. And all of the crafters will work independently of each other. So finally, what about crafting bones to bone meal? Now there we have a problem, because we get three bone meal for one bone. This fills up rather rapidly, so if we have hopper speed or even double hopper speed, this can't keep up. And however we move the items out, we would be too slow. And here's a solution that is robust but needs a bit more space. And the idea is to move the bone meal directly into another crafter and craft the bone meal to bone blocks. So we indirectly power the first crafter. So there has to be a block between, otherwise we would power this crafter along. And we might end up with a white die. And this crafter is powered using a clock whenever items come in. If we put in a few bones, then we will have a redstone signal here. This piston will be powered, powers this crafter, and then here we have the regular setup I just described for items with different recipes. And the items go into a dropper and are pushed out one block later, so this dropper will always buffer one item. Okay, now you know my basic setups. As I said, this is my go-to because it's so easy to set up. This clock-based setup is very efficient if you have a fast farm and a lot of items coming in. But these setups here aren't too difficult to build either. And once you have done a couple, you can set them up in almost no time. Now, in many cases, I prefer the setups like this that power the block under the crafter, because usually you have an item filter here. This setup here on top would lock this hopper. And in this case, if I would, for example, send a redstone signal to this ice block, which we can, of course, but then this hopper would be locked and item might pass by and be not picked up. I haven't really started to work with designs that require several different ingredients, but I made a video in the past, both from Universal Crafter 
and other setups where we craft at a slow speed, for example for a storage system, I will link these in the description of course as well. So thanks for watching, leave a like if you want to see more content like this, leave a comment if you have other good setups or if you have questions, and please subscribe to not miss any of my videos. See you next time, bye bye!